Hello there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on uh, something we've had lots and lots of requests for. Uh, we're going to do up a scheme for the Imperial Fist. Now uh, we've got um, our uh, regular Intercessor Marine here and we've got a Hellblaster Marine there as well. And um, I think what we're going to end up doing is for the first one we're going to do that classic kind of yellow uh, yellow scheme with uh, you know kind of the dark trim and all of that which will be pretty sweet um, you know, a little more more current and then because of the return of Gilmon uh, as I've been doing with my other Primaris Marines I'm going to focus on a pre heresy version of the Hellblaster guy so um, you know kind of dark dark armor with little you know big shocks of yellow high contrast uh, going to look absolutely awesome so uh, I'll get both of these guys primed up and the first part uh, that we're going to work on is going to be our um, regular uh, contemporary scheme for the Imperial Fists. All right, so our friend's all done up in Korax white here, and um, we're just going to do uh, the basic of the uh, the basic elements of the coat, and we're going to apply a big pile of Uriel yellow, um, thin coats applied over time, not just a big pile on <laughs> one coat because you know uh, we wouldn't see the model anymore, and um, we're just going to cover up all the armor in. Thin this down a bit here. Uh, we're just going to cover up all the armor in uh, Uriel yellow. Now you can see I've got it on really thin here now. Uh, with the light coats, uh, it definitely helps to have the uh, white undercoat for sure. Uh, and uh, make sure that your coats are pretty thin. So this is actually uh, this is actually quite thin, this one here. But uh, I'm going to apply two coats on here. I just want to make sure that I get good coverage. And um, obviously, you're applying thinner coats is always better. But the truth of it is, if I, uh, if I glob it on and I plan to do it in one big coat, I'm probably going to miss spots. So... Uh, really nice to kind of see what's going on and how the paint uh, settles in there. Okay, so we can see that the Uriel yellow is uh, quite bright. Um, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of darken up the model a little bit with some of the uh, more balanced features. So we're going to use Lead Belcher and we're going to use that for all of the uh, metallic pieces of our model. Now, uh, there's a whole bunch with this one, so um, grab your tea or your coffee or whatever it is you're into, and um, let's get going. Now, we're going to start off initially with uh, a couple things here. So, uh, the easy one that's right in front of us is the uh, bolt rifle, but uh, I'm going to start with the head and kind of work our way down. Now, just inside here, we've got these little ear pieces. Um, we'll go in and do that. Now, if you are a little sloppy or messy, or it is kind of tricky to get into uh, some of those details. Uh, don't stress out about it. Just um, you know, we can always go back in with more aerial yellow and 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 tidy it up for sure. Okay, so we've got that. We've got the little piping that's at the bottom of the helmet here. All right, nice. Now we'll also go after any of the um, functional uh, bits. So any of this uh, collapsible, these kind of folding elements at the back here. We'll do the handle for the bolt pistol. We'll do the belt buckle here. Continuing along with the different folding accordion joints here. At the back on the power armor, uh, there is these little conduits at the back. And on the backpack, we've got these exhaust vents at the bottom. We've got these kind of lead connector -y points up here. These little reaction-y vent thruster pieces. We'll make sure that we leave that casing up at the top intact. On the backpack here, we've got this uh, kind of venting that comes in at the top. So we'll make sure we don't plug up too much of the detail. Now, if you go over, it's okay. We're going to be coming back with this with the bad and black. But in the short term, we'll make sure we get this vent all done up. A kind of radiator on top. And it's nice. See, that's a little bit of personality instead of just going with the plain straight yellow all the way across or black or whatever, whatever color you want to do the backpack there. Now there are a few spots here where we've got these little leads on the legs, so we'll make sure we grab those. 
We've got the leads here on the arms as well. And then we can finally get to the uh, the bolter rifle. So with the bolter rifle, I'm just going to start off with the uh, barrels here. The little piece, that little element that comes off the bottom there. Okay. And then we'll do the kind of the, the grip at the bottom here. We'll do the magazine all around. And at the back, we'll get all around that casing there. Now there's the little slide here. There's the kind of the selector up at the top. We'll get that. All right, and then we'll get this framework up at the top here, the sight. Now again, if you're a little sloppy, don't stress out. We're coming right in with the Abaddon Black after, so you can actually go a little sloppier than you normally would. And we won't forget the bottom of the handle here. All right, I'll do a dummy check and make sure I got all the details here, and then we'll move on to the gold. Okay, so now that we got the silver done, uh, we're going to continue along with the metallics, and there's not a whole lot of gold on this uh, on this model, uh, but any of the fetishes, any of the iconography, uh, anything like that, we're going to do in retributor armor, and um, it's uh, it's it's a great color. It kind of goes on; it bases really well, and. Like I said, there's not a whole lot on this model. So uh, there's obviously the kind of Aquila and, and Skull here on the bolt rifle. Okay. And then in addition to that, we'll do the uh, Aquila on the chest. All right, so we can see that the gold now, uh, obviously not too much in the way of gold, but uh, with the metallics all done, uh, we can now start moving on to our uh, our kind of balancing color uh, is the uh, Abaddon Black there. And um, all we're going to do with this one here is we're just going to use it to accentuate certain uh, bits of trim, um, you know, kind of the knee pads, uh, you know, just just basically a few of the kind of the uh, you know these few pieces that draw your eye in. Uh, we'll also use it as a basis for anything that we're going to use uh, uh, white decals for. So um, let's give it a go. So I'm going to start off now with my uh, knee pad, um, both my knee pads actually, and I'm going to go in and around, and uh, you know what maybe. Maybe I'll just do the one knee pad. I think that looks pretty nice uh, kind of counterbalance there. Um, so we'll just do the one uh, knee pad there. We'll leave the other one yellow just to give that little bit of uh, brightness there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is on our bolt rifle, we're going to work our way around. Now, uh, as I often do, uh, I'll start with the smaller kind of metallic uh, details first because you can see that it's a lot easier for me to go around uh, this little piece here. It's a lot easier to go around than it is to, uh, you know, kind of paint that silver in without messing up your black. So uh, we'll do, and you can see it illustrated there as well, works great. So we'll work our way around the bolt rifle and get that all based up. And I'm putting this on fairly thin because I'm going to come back with uh, an additional coat or two. I just want to make sure that I'm not uh, globbing it on too thick here. Now, while that little bit is drying, uh, you can see, oh, that was really wet. Uh, so I'll let that dry and I'll go on, maybe not as watered down next time. Uh, but on the backpack, I'll do the panel here on the reactor. I'll make sure I grab that. Nice circular motion kind of working always out towards the outside, which is pretty sweet. And um, before I get into the shoulder pads, I'm also going to work on any of the uh, leather, leathery kind of elements in here. So let's start with the belt buckle. These kind of hard uh, industrial leather elements here. And then the belt itself. And then all of our little pouches and the holster. So we'll finish off the pouches and the holster and all the leathery bits there. I'll go back and I'll do uh, an extra coat on the 
uh, bolt rifle here just going around that kind of sh uh, shrouding around the outside of the bolt rifle and just take your time just keep filling in the blanks and uh, you can definitely preserve that detail really nicely uh, because of the way that we've done it here. Now before I do the big uh, sweep and kind of run around and, and finish off all the uh, holsters and pouches and all the other stuff, uh, what I'm going to do here is just go in and finish off our uh, pauldrons, just kind of the lining of the pauldrons, and hopefully it'll tamp down the, uh, the old white balance on the, uh, on the camera here. It's looking a little bright. Uh, so I'm just going to go in here and very carefully edge out uh, our shoulder pauldrons. And if I do screw up, that's fine. I can always come back and touch it up. Now, a bit of an inside trick. We're going to be playing a little bit with the inside of the pauldrons uh, on the video after this one, where we basically do some kind of pre-heresy markings and iconography. So uh, if you do screw up, that's fine. We'll always be coming back. Uh, and we can always tweak with a little bit more of the other colors to kind of tidy things up. All right, so we've got a little bit of a tidy up that kind of went on here. Uh, after the black, I went in with a little bit of yellow. Now you can see, obviously, I didn't get it perfectly, but uh, that's that's totally fine. We'll keep kind of playing around with it as we go. And we are going to be doing some cool things with the, the pauldrons here. Uh, but just went in, just generally tidied things up a little bit, kind of pre-wash. And there's only kind of three other little bits to do left. Um, we're going to do Mephiston Red and Screaming Skull for the Purity Seal. And then we'll do White Scar for uh, just inside of the face, that kind of frontal mask there. And we're going to do that uh, just to be... Well, you know, honestly, just give it a little bit of extra variety. So uh, I'll take my white scar here. Uh, I'll make sure I'm nice and thin in terms of my uh, my consistency of paint. And I'm going to just go in and do uh, the mask. So uh, everything that's just kind of in here, uh, we're going to start it off with a layer of the white scar. And just to add a little bit of visual variety. And I did this with the ultras, and it uh, it turned out pretty well. I really was really happy with it. But it just kind of draws your eye into the face to have that little bit of extra extra detail there. Next up, I'll grab my Mephiston Red, and I'll just do in the Purity Seal here, just that wax part of the seal. And then with the Purity Seal, I will do Screaming Skull just on the parchment part of the purity seals. Perfect, okay, so now we've got them all kinda dressed up here, looking really, really solid. Uh, we'll move into the wash stage. Now, uh, but first I'm just gonna finish off the base because I like to wash the base at the, the same time here. So I'll wash the, uh, sorry, I'll uh, prep up the base, I'll do the base colors for that, uh, and then we'll come back and do the wash. Okay, so we got our major colors all kind of blocked in, and a uh, very easy paint scheme to put together, I think. It's, uh, like I said, nice, simple, clean, the plates are good and all that. Uh, um, so yeah, loving it. So next up is going to be our wash, and um, this is a bit of a homebrew wash. Uh, it's 50% uh, floor wax of all things, and then I do 25% Agrax Earthshade and 25% Nuln Oil. So it's uh, it just basically thins out the um, thins out the washes quite a bit without using, say, a water or like a Lamian medium. Uh, the uh, the floor wax acts as this uh, monster, awesome uh, flow aid. So it's really good. So I'm gonna load a big pile up on my brush. And then uh, right in here, we're just going to start right away and just uh, start diving in. And you'll see that it goes right after the face. Um, you can see that it goes in the Aquilae. I don't know if you can see in there. Uh, but with the Aquilae, it just goes right in there, settles in really nicely, but doesn't entirely stick to the flatter surfaces. So you get these awesome uh, kind of gradiated looks to them. So... I'm just going to uh, splash loads on our friend here. I'm going to make sure that uh, if there's any pooling, any kind of significant pooling, that I'll uh, make sure I wick that away uh, with my brush. Okay, so with the wash all done, we can see that it's brought out all that awesome, awesome detail there. And um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to capitalize on all that uh, kind of depth and shading and all that. And we're going to use aerial yellow again. And we're just going to go and basically overbrush over top of all the existing color. Now, we want to keep as much of that depth as we can in there. Now, I think 
Uh, if you wanted a super clean uh, version of the paint job, I'm sure you could just, uh, you know, paint uh, the yellow and then just go in with wash around the edges and that would work fine absolutely but I like I like it to look a little more uh, realistic a little more worn um, I, just like a white car is very difficult to maintain I'm sure a yellow armor would be insanely difficult to to keep clean but I think it looks great on the field to have a little bit of you know extra character and dirt and all that to it so um, let's use uh, Iroh Yellow and um, I'm going to be painting this in kind of a streaky kind of uh, look and feel to it. So um, the way I do it's pretty simple really. I just uh, grab a little bit of your yellow here and then what I'm going to do is um, you pick say a plate. Let's start with the plate, that's the easy one. And I'll do an edge highlight around the plate first uh, just to kind of make sure that I've got that base uh, covered. Okay, and then after that, uh, I'm just going to streak down like this. Okay, and just get it so that it's a little bit, uh, a little bit streaky. So now that that plate's dry, I'm just going to go back in again and hit it one more time with that streaky kind of look and feel to it. Uh, and then I'll pretty much leave it just about there, I think. That's that's gonna be about right, but I'll see once it dries, we'll figure it out. Uh, on any of the rounded pieces, like on the foot here, uh, I'll just do like an overbrush of that area and that detail. And uh, I'll do the same here with the leg. So I'll start with my, just kind of highlighting around the edge a little bit here, and then I'll just streak in the rest. Now it's gonna look a little messy at first, but if we keep going, uh, we'll maintain the texture, but we'll get a little bit of that cleanness restored to the, to the model. Now while those other pieces are uh, drying, I'll work on the pauldrons here. And with the pauldrons, I'm just going to start and just kind of streak down like this. Now again, you can see that it looks really messy on that first run through, but when we go back now to say the leg here, where you can see it's still quite messy, uh, once you go in with that second coat, it really kind of tops it up and unifies it all together. So don't get discouraged on that first round if it looks a little, uh, if it looks a little too messy. You can always go back in and just keep streaking in that color. But you want to always make sure that you leave all that little bits of detail, like that little notch in there. Make all that detail, uh, or sorry, keep all that detail there. For the helmet, it'll be the same thing. Uh, we're just going to go, uh, for the helmet, we'll just uh, do the crest there first. Get a nice kind of solid striated color on the, on the crest there. And then for the rest of the helmet here, We'll just go in and just touch the color in like this, and we're going to leave all that depth and detail, that gradation at the back, at the top and the bottom. We'll just leave all that gradation in there. So I'm just gonna work my way around, and you can see here that this one's already dried, so just keep building up that color, and you won't have to really do much of a highlight because you'll have this nice gradated uh, buildup of color, it'll be beautiful. All right, so I'm grinding away on my, uh, just kind of that rebasing of that yellow. And uh, even though I went off camera, I just kind of wanted to come back and, and address something. So uh, you'll see that the process is never really a perfect process. Uh, you can see here that I've gone in uh, a little bit heavy on that one line right there. Uh, you can see that the helmet isn't as uh, defined or as distinctive as I'd want it to be kind of around this bottom piece here. Uh, so just as I'm kind of trucking along, and you'll see that I've still got lots to go and stuff, but um, just as I'm trucking along with those light coats, um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get uh, my wash again. And you know, if you, if you kind of go over, just grab a little bit of wash and just adjust. Now, 
We're keeping our paints thin. We're, our wash is quite thin as well, which is great. So we can kind of go back and forth a little bit until it's at that level that you want it to, uh, to, to be at. So uh, taking a little bit of wash here, I can just go in and I can just kind of knock it back in there and restore those those lines again and it looks very natural it looks very very good very simple and it looks like it was meant to be so i'll just go in and you can see that you can go back in there maybe i'll grab a little bit more here um you can go back in on any of these uh any of these creases anything like that and you can just restore if you're not happy with kind of the end result and so you can get all that definition back uh see so compared to that you get all that definition back and really it's next to no effort at all you're just taking a little bit of your wash and going in and just restoring a little bit of that a little bit of that shading in there and you'll see you get that nice gradation uh, going back and forth now all right so i'm going to continue along i just thought i'd mention that um oh there's a couple spots as well where uh you know if you've if you're not happy with the end result uh, for example if i look in here you'll see that i've got this uh, grading and you see that there's wash in some elements and, and not in the others uh, I can just top those up as I'm working my way around the model which is nice and easy and clean and efficient uh, in addition to that there we can actually go in and you'll see here uh, I've got good definition on these little uh, these kind of uh, these these openings these vents in that are in here in the armor uh, and I don't in here so I can just grab the wash and I can pull out and redefine that piece now, because our wash is so uh, thin, it'll make it very easy for us to go through and, and, and tidy up without really discoloring any of the, of the rest of the model. So uh, just going in here, doing this, and then we'll just let that, um, let that dry as we kind of pick our way around. But I just thought I'd mention that, that uh, the process isn't always a perfect one. Um, it's just about you know patience and iteration uh, kind of going over and over all the way through. Now it doesn't take a whole lot of time to to do this, but you know take your time. Throw on a throw on a show on TV or uh, you know listen to your favorite podcast or I don't know throw on some uh, painting videos on YouTube. <laughs> I guess if you want, uh, but you can always go in. Just take your time, and it's not about skill. It's about just kind of time time invested as well. Okay, so I'm going to keep going along here, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the yellow finished up. But uh, yeah, I'll just uh, kind of go back and forth with the wash and the yellow until I'm until I'm really happy. All right, so we've got the yellow done now. Um, lots and lots of coats. Again, just super patient. Uh, kind of went in a couple spots here and, and, and retouched up with a little bit of wash. But in general, you just keep kind of playing till you're happy now. This does look a lot rougher uh, than like just a straight sheet of yellow, which I... I prefer actually. I think it's really, really good, and it's um, you know you don't have to you you don't have to make it super clean. You don't have to make it super messy. You can just do whatever you want with it. But I do like that little bit of a rougher texture. It looks like a, a solid plate of color. However, it looks like, like I said it's just uh, just being out in the weather a little bit, you know. So I like it. Uh, I like that quite a bit. So uh, moving on. Uh, next up, we're going to be working on our uh, silvers, our metallics, and so I'm going to use a uh, Runefang steel. And with that Runefang steel, I'm going to go over and um, it's just going to be a little tidy up. There's not a, a ton of, uh, of, of silver on the model. Uh, but what I'll do, just get sure, make sure I don't have too much on my brush here. Uh, but what I will do is um, with the uh, bolt rifle, I'm just going to do a quick overbrush of the colors here. Okay. And on the top as well, I'll just gently run my brush along. Okay, so essentially the smaller details or the rounded details, I'm going to do an overbrush. So I'm um, kind of like a dry brush with a bit more paint on it. And then with the uh, kind of larger pieces, uh, so I'm mean, obviously going in doing the, the uh, you know, the helmet here, doing this here. Uh, but with the larger pieces, like uh, what's on the backpack essentially, I'm just going to just kind of touch the edges, do an overbrush over these pieces at the back. Uh, I'll do a quasi kind of edge highlight around the, the, the pack here. Okay, I'll work my way around. And I'll overbrush the rounded spots if I can get in there. Okay, the leads will just do a quick overbrush just to add a little bit of that uh, brightness back to that silver. And where we're gonna spend our time in terms of edge highlighting, We've got this, uh, this, this vent up here at the top, 
And I'm just going to go in here and I'll just do an edge highlight. Okay, around that edge. Uh, going up the sides, touching the two little kind of nodes at the top, and then just edging around the panel here. Maybe a little overbrush action there. So not replacing the color, just touching up a little bit on that on that color. Now you can again uh, kind of overbrush all the little bumps and ridges here, uh, and then you can edge the backs wherever it's kind of got a smaller, more defined edge, then I would just edge highlight that. Uh, wherever it's got, uh, you know, kind of bumps or a little bit more surface, then I would just go and do like an overbrush. So it's a nice combination of both, but it really pops out that, that color quite, quite well. So, all right, I'll continue on with this. Uh, I'll go after, make sure I got the helmet. I'll overbrush kind of all the vents and the belt buckle, thing like that. Uh, but pretty much everything but, uh, if you're super adventurous, you can go after the, the plates here when you're kind of low on paint. Uh, but, uh, but like I said, you know, you usually end up filling in the detail. Now, again, if you fill in the detail on anything, we'll see with the white on the, on the, on the mask there. Uh, if you over kind of overdo it a little bit, just go back with some watch, touch it up. If you go on the other colors, go back with the other colors, touch it up and just take your time and iterate your way through. Okay, I've gone around, grabbed all the silver, and uh, really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, next up, we'll be using fulgurite copper, and we're just going to go over the gold elements. So it was uh, retributor armor previously. Uh, we'll go over that, and this is going to be a very, uh, a very light uh, overbrushing, almost like a dry brush. So you want to make sure there's not very much paint on your brush at all. And all we're doing is we're just picking out. Uh, whatever's standing out here like this and we're just kind of running our brush very gently over um, the 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 gold elements that are there and uh, again carefully in here tough to see because I'm shading it but uh, uh, I'll take my gold and I'll just touch in on top of our Aquile there as well all right super easy all right, we've got the metallics all done, and now we're just going to use Eschen Gray to go over top of the black in terms of an edge highlight. Uh, so I've got my Eschen Gray here, and I'm just going to do an edge highlight uh, over uh, the bolt rifle and the shoulder pads. Now with the knee pad and with the uh, circle at the back here on the on the reactor, or the, the casing for the reactor, it's going to be a little bit uh, different. So making sure I got lots of control here. I'm just going to go in okay, and just do an edge highlight around the bolt rifle here. So you can see that I'm being a little bit messy here and that's fine. We're actually going to go back in with the black in a minute and just kind of tidy those lines up. Uh, it's a nice fast way to do an edge highlight and you'll see that here as well. Uh, I'm just going to go around the edge here like this and you'll see it's pretty sloppy but we'll restore the black in in just a second on the reactor casing as well we'll just work our way around now for the pouches you'll see that I've uh, made a little bit of a mess here but that's okay I'll just sneak in this uh, Eschen gray here and we'll just do an edge highlight over all of the pieces of the holster and finally, uh, we'll do the shoulder pads and we'll just pick out the edges of the shoulder pads just like this. All right, so as promised, I'm gonna take my Abaddon Black and I'm just going to go in and just restore a little bit of that color uh, wherever I kind of went overboard uh, with the gray. Now this is, a, again, a very fast way to do it. I've got a whole video on subtractive edge highlighting, but you can see that I've got all that highlight there, but it's much easier and faster for me to paint away that uh, that highlight than it is to have the super steady hands to get it perfect 100% of the time. Uh, you can even do that with your holsters here. Uh, if you go over a little bit, you can restore the shade of that color. And on our pauldrons here, I can even go back in. And if you're super careful, you can even restore a bit of that color here if you've gone over for whatever reason. On the bolt rifle, I'll just do a nice easy line right up the middle. Very nice. It looks like I spent tons of time uh, doing the edge highlighting, when in reality that subtractive highlighting just makes it so much easier.
And of course it works on the knee pad as well. Awesome. Okay, so as we move our way into the final details, uh, I'm gonna take White Scar and I'm just going to go over the face mask uh, one last time. Now this is going to be a very light overbrush, again, almost a dry brush with just a little bit of extra paint on there. And the goal here, of course, is to make sure that I just bring out a little bit of the ridges of the mask and that little bit of area underneath the eyes. Uh, if you go over or you touch something else, uh, just come in with a little bit of wash and restore, restore the shape of the mask there. Okay, so there's really only one detail left to play with, and that is going to be our purity seal. I'm going to do that uh, with Wild Rider Red around the um, the wax of the seal, and then I'll use Screaming Skull uh, just for the parchment side of the scroll there. So with the Wild Rider Red, I'll just go in and around the red, just kind of touching the outside edge, just to make sure I pick up that little bit of highlight there. And then I'll use Screaming Skull just to do a little bit of an edge highlight and pick out the overbrushed kind of details of the purity seal here. Okay, so with the main elements of the color done, uh, I'm going to come back in here with my uh, Micron pen and I'm just going to do a black line. Now, uh, it adds a lot of definition between the different plates and the different colors. Uh, so what I'm going to do is anytime I have two different textures and uh, the back leg here is a perfect example Anytime I have two different textures I'll just use my black line pen or my micron pen to go in here and just kind of redefine Even though there's wash there. I'm just going to go in and redefine that uh, little bit of, of, of line there Okay, so wherever there's two different textures. We'll put that in and I'll also do it wherever two colors meet and it really kind of tidies up our, our lines here. So say for example on our uh, pauldron, I'll just go in and I'll just go in on the black line on that right there. And you can see it adds just a little bit of extra depth uh, if we're doing it between the, the yellow here and the steel or we're going around a rivet or we want to do it uh, especially up actually the vent up here would be a great example. And you can see that we just bring in that little bit of extra color uh, differentiation between them. It's a nice kind of hard line. Great for armor plates, great for everything else. So yeah, I swear by this, I love it. So I'll continue along uh, anywhere that there's two textures uh, that meet, anywhere that there's two colors that meet, uh, we'll, uh, we'll use this to black line. All right, so I'm gonna keep going around. I'll make sure that I black line the rest of the model here. And I'll also do just kind of that general dummy check uh, to make sure that I've got all the details that I'm looking for and uh, make sure all the colors don't overlap onto others, whatever. Uh, and then I'll uh, finish off the base to match the rest of the army. And we'll be right back to take a final look. All right, so we've got him all finished up. Um, I went through, anyway, kind of as I went through the, the whole process of putting together, black lining and all that, if I saw something that was a little out of touch there, I would go in and uh, black line it to kind of fix it up. And, um, you know, digging it. Nice, dirty, kind of dull, uh, you know, kind of dull uh, yellow uh, color. Looks like he was in the battle. Uh, kind of rained on a little bit too hard, uh, but still moving strong. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see this against like a green or brown kind of battlefield. Like a whole army of these guys would just be monsters on the field. Um, you know, they'd totally draw your eye in and be incredibly eye-catching. So that high contrast color scheme, uh, the yellow and the black, um, the little bit of white on on the face there uh, I just like the way that it just kind of just sets the face kind of stands it out apart as opposed to like a solid uh, plate of yellow loving the detail on this and I just think yeah the scheme comes together super super well so um, that'll be the end of our part one of our video uh, in part two we'll work on a little bit of the uh, the heraldry and we'll focus on some uh, application of decals and um, yeah you know, looking really really good so uh, I hope you enjoyed this I hope you got uh, a lot of value out of this uh, it was a ton of fun to put together I'm really digging the bright color scheme so uh, mine's kind of churning on what I can do 
do now with tanks and things like that. But um, uh, if you like the video, hit that like button. Uh, it's a huge help to get the video out there. It's a huge help to the channel, and uh, I'd appreciate that a ton. And if you want more videos like this, uh, don't hesitate. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's also a little bell by that subscribe button there. Make sure you get notifications of all of our future videos. And until then, uh, we'll catch you in part two, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.